just every day, every day except Wednesday. It's on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at noon. And it's facilitated by Minister Delon. Amen. And the phone number for that is 1-857-216-6700 with the access code 334-336. Write that number down, you guys. Put it in your phones. Then all you have to do is hit it, and it'll go right to it, and call in. And this is the same number for Iron Man, Stop and play, Pray, but men uh, for Iron Man, it's every Monday night. Get on the line and listen. Stop and Pray is on Tuesday evening at 8.30. The weekly verse for this is Happy Holiday. And also I want to make sure for you to stop and think, this is the reason for the season. Not just happy holiday. Amen. Amen. Bible study is on Wednesday. The morning Bible study is hosted by the Pastor Nina Chapter. And then the evening Bible study is at 7 to 8.30 with the same phone number and access code. Do we have any time, any visitor or haven't been here for a very long time? If so, please stand so that we can recognize you. Looking over, I think we're all family today. Amen. 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 All of the December birthdays will be given at the end of the month. Amen. Now I will turn it over to the deacon. Amen. 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 Close our eyes and meditate on Jesus Christ. Let's go through the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we come to you first this morning and acknowledge who you are. We know you're the author, the finisher of everything. You've created everything. You made everything in our lives, and we just thank you. We just give you the praise and honor because without you, we would be able to stand up here this morning and give praise. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, that went to the cross. But what's so good about it that he got up that next, uh, what, next three days, he got up and had all power in his hand. And that's what we want to do one day when we leave this world. We want to be able to just Thank you. Say thank you, Jesus, and see your face again. So we just thank you for all the things you have done. Now I pray for each and every one here this morning. I pray for the ones that's not here. We pray for the family members. We ask you to touch them in a special way. Whatever sickness, whatever disease, whatever healing that they're going through, Father, we ask you to just administer them in a special way. We ask for your, your guidance and understanding. We ask for your blessings all through the week next week and any time else. We ask you to bless us through this holiday season. Keep us safe. Let us do the things that we really beneficial to you. Give you the praise and give you the honor. We just thank you. Now we pray for this city of uh, Rialto. We ask you to bless each one here in Rialto. We even pray the, city, the cities around Rialto, whatever they're going through, whatever things have been happening in this world, that we know you control everything. And we know we leave it all to you, Father. But we know we've got to be aware and stay on our knees praising you. Because we've got to pray for the sinners in this world today, Father. Some of us, are, uh, doing, people on the outside are doing things that we never expected to see. But it's happening. It's happening. And something said, like they say, to a snatch and go or break in and take things that does not belong to them, Father. So, Father, we just ask you, we know time is at a, a time in life that... People don't have anything, so they do anything possible to get something. So that's why we got to be aware. But Father, we know the government is is in control. But sometimes you have to minister to the government because sometimes they leave us stretched out and we don't know what to do. So we just ask for your blessings in that area, the president and whoever else control under the president, Father. Now, brother, we pray for the uh, the soldier that's uh, keeping this world safe keeping us safe at home. We pray for them, you know, Father, and we and mention to them in a special way. And Father, we pray for the sick and shed in everywhere. Hospital, convalescent home, one that's isolated during this pandemic uh, uh, virus that we're going through. We ask you just to uh, be, keep us safe. Let us give you praise and honor. Then we pray for the ones that have lost loved ones, Father. We know they lost loved ones and it's hurting them every day because 
the uh, time is at a time that when we are uh, praying on the holidays that we sit at that table, we know it's going to be an empty chair there. And sometimes we don't know how to act to that. So we ask for your blessing to come and give us the peace, the strength to go through these holidays, missing the loved ones that we have seen that have been taken away during this virus. So we pray for that, Father. We pray for the ministry. Now we pray for our pastor and the minister while they're away. Keep them safe. Do the things that they need to do. Let them enjoy the rest, whatever they take to do. Be there with them, Father. Then, Father, we pray for uh, the speaker of this hour. We ask you to touch her in a special way. Give her the, give her the strength, the wisdom, the courage to do your will, Father. She, she's here just to say your word and give us the word, Father, that uplift each and every one of us for the rest of the week or for the rest of the year because this year is almost over. So we just ask you to touch her this morning so that she would be able to deliver the word but not nervousness, but you have to be there for her. So after all of this, Father, we just thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify your holy name. We ask all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say, Amen. chapter 20. I'll be reading 1 and 3, 5 and 7, but our theme is taken from 15 through 18. So we can stand and read that one. 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 15 through 18. Okay. He said, Everybody there? Amen. Okay. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz. And you will find them at the edge of the gorge in the desert of Jurel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance. And see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Judah and Jerusalem. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15 through 18. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down and worshiped before the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. So as I look out over this world, I see a world in the midst of battles and struggles. As Christians, we're painfully aware that we're in struggles and battles for our own selves. It rains on the just as well as the unjust. The Bible is filled with lessons of the various ways God has fought on behalf of his people. So our study today is one lesson, and it will teach us about being still and allowing God to work it out. Amen. We're talking about King Jehoshaphat, and he provides a standard to deal with unexpected battles. Now, no one saw 2019 coming, 2020 continuing, 2021 continuing with the same thing. So that could be considered a battle for us. 
But he, in this lesson today, we're going to see how to deal with those unexpected things. We've lost family members, some lost homes, jobs. All those things were unexpected, but we're going to learn how to deal with them. Amen. Jehoshaphat was a Judean king. He was a good king. His heart was courageous in all the ways of the Lord. He brought many reforms to Judah and even sent out officials to teach the word of God to the cities of Judah. He ruled with wisdom and he sought after God. So in 2 Chronicles 20, here's the problem. The Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Menunites came to wage war against him. As a king, everything fell on his shoulders. But what I like about him, as we'll go further on, he wasn't haughty. He didn't say, oh, how dare they come for me? I'm the king. You gonna disrespect my land? You know we do that. He didn't do that. As the, the people were afraid and brought their fears to the king and told him, they're coming to get you. A whole lot of people are coming from beyond the sea, and they're coming for you. A battle was coming his way. In our scriptures today, Jehoshaphat was cornered on all sides, just like we often are. Come on. Jehoshaphat had a solution. He went to the throne instead of the phone. Mm. Now, it is a natural response to go to the phone. But if you want something different, you're going to have to do something different. God is telling us to go to the throne. As Christians, we should be prepared when trials and dif difficulties come our way, but oftentimes we are surprised. But we have to know it's a normal part of life when you're living for Jesus. 1 Peter 4, 12 through 13, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial which comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering, that ye that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Amen. Now I know I, we wish we could get the heads up when challenges challenges are coming or what the outcome is going to be. But the key for us is to know what to do during them. In life's battle, you have a choice. You can either run away or face these challenges with God on your side. Jehoshaphat gives us a valuable lesson on how to live in faith during the battles we're facing. Amen. Now Jehoshaphat was afraid, rightfully so. The Judean army was no match for the Moab, the Ammon, and the Mennonites. How could this tiny nation survive the attack of a powerful enemy? And oftentimes we feel this way. How can me, by myself, survive the attack of whatever is going on in your life? It's by putting faith in God, placing things in God's hand. Yes. He dropped everything and he sought the Lord. He commanded the whole land to go on a fast. So when we're going through battles, we often decide to rush into uh, rush into it and try to figure things out on our own. Mm -hmm. We want to control the scenario. Jehoshaphat did the opposite. He knew there was a problem. That's the first thing. Most of the time we refuse to believe that we have a problem or we don't understand the nature of our problem. But in 2 Chronicles 20 and 3, then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout Judah. Lesson to learn here. First, he was afraid, but you notice he gave the fear to God. Amen. From last week, use your keys. Yes. He didn't live in fear. Amen. Then he went to the throne, not the phone. He didn't have his generals draw up expansive battle plans. Yes. He went to the one source, which was the Lord. He knew that God was bigger than his problem. Our God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yes. He knew his God was on his side. Uh -huh. And he made the problem God's problem to solve. Yes. He asked others to join in. He proclaimed a fast. God has given us people to walk through life with. Are you allowing them to pray for you while you're in your battles? Are you allowing them to encourage you? I suggest go to the Lord, ask the Lord to show you who to go to, to have them pray with you. 
And while we're going through this, it's time to think about the past. See, Jehoshaphat, he remembered the past. He gathered the people and he offered a prayer to the Lord. And he remembered what God had done for him in the past. He acknowledged God's greatness. Uh -huh. He said he rules over all the kingdoms. Yes. He has power and might in his hands, yes. so none can withstand him. Verse 7 says, Did you not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, for your people Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? See, God has won many battles for me. I don't know about you. He has done amazing things for me. And he's assured me that he's with me and it will work out for my good. Yeah. Remembering how God has worked in the past should move us forward in confidence. Yeah. So after remembering the past, now we need to remember God's promises. Yeah. God's word never changes. Yeah. Second Chronicles 20 and 9, if calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name yes. and will cry out to you in distress and you will hear us and save us. God has promised us over and over again to save his people when they turn back to the Lord. I thank God for reminding us over and over and extending grace over and over. So I know you've forgotten some of his promises. Okay. Hebrews 13 and 5b, for he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Philippians 4 and 19, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory for Christ Jesus. Isaiah 41 and 10, fear not, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. As we remember his promises, we also have to keep our eyes on God. Yes. Yes, yes. Satan wants us to focus on the battle yep. instead of a God who will resolve the battle. Yes. Jehoshaphat understood this. In yes. verse 12, he says, yes. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Yes. That's a key right there. Yes. Oftentimes, we have no clue what to do. Yes. So we act without focus. Come on. But Jehoshaphat had no clue what to do. Uh -huh. But he focused on God yep. and the one who had the clue. So tell me today, where are your eyes? On the battle or on God? The whole country stood before the Lord waiting on an answer. And the answer came in verse 15 through 18. And he spoke to him through the prophet Jehaziel. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the vast army. For the battle is not yours. It's God. Then he says tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up the path of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the gorge of the desert. You will not have to fight this battle. If I can just use my Holy Ghost imagination, that would be a sigh of relief. Heavenly Father, you mean to tell me you got this? I don't have to go into battle fighting. You've already taken care of it, Jesus. Yes. It says take up your position. Stand firm and see the deliverance. The Lord will give you Judah and Jerusalem. Yes. Do not be afraid. He's yes. repeating. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. us to rely on him in the midst of battles. When we do this, we realize that God is our hope and God gets the glory. God does not send you in battle to reveal your strength. It's to reveal his strength. Yes. Hallelujah. I love how God gave them the strategy yes. and the instructions and it didn't cause them to fight. Yes. He told them it's his battle and he told them where the enemy would be coming from and where to march. The next day, the people marched toward the enemy, and the Lord said ambushes against the enemies. Watching work.
praise and faith led the way to the battle, they didn't have to fight. The enemies destroyed each other. Hallelujah. While Judah marched around the battlefield. When they arrived, they saw dead bodies of their enemies. The fear of the Lord came up on all the kingdoms surrounding Judah and Jerusalem. The battle is not yours to fight. Because God wants to reveal his holiness, yeah. his love, yeah. and his power in our lives. Yeah. Humble dependence and faithful obedience sees the victory. Okay. The Lord has it all worked out if we just stand still and watch him. Yeah. Psalms 46 and 10, be still and know that I am God. Yeah. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Now, many times we struggle to stand still and wait for the Lord. Being still means to wait. You have to be willing to wait. Yes, yes. It means to put your agenda aside uh -huh. and allow God to work his perfect plan. Yes. So you're going to say, I just have a hard time doing that. Yeah. Type A personalities, we like to do everything. Yeah. You can't be still. But what I suggest is while you're waiting, Spend time in his presence by trusting and leaning on his word. Yeah. So the Lord's already told me he's got this. He's already told me to cast my cares, but I still want to worry. No, that doesn't work. Then you can stay in his presence, spend time in his presence by repenting for any unconfessed sin. Yeah. Yeah. Now sin builds a wall between you and God. Yeah. Then you can practice obedience. It's easier to remain still in God when you're practicing obedience. Then you're going to find scriptures that teach you about being still, about waiting. Like I said last week, you're going to read it. You're going to study it. And then you're going to pray the scriptures while you're waiting. And then another thing I found interesting, take this time to use your gifts to serve others. So while you're waiting for God to fight for you, Devote some of that energy and that time where you can't be still in effort to help others. Amen. And that will help you also to practice patience. Yes, Lord. You remember, God's timing is best. And when God fights for you, there are no repercussions. Huh. Everything is done perfectly. Yes. But we want to put on our spiritual armor and think it's up to us to run into battle. Ephesians 6. 13 and 14, tells us to put on the armor of God and then to stand. Mm -hmm. The armor is for our protection, not for us to think that we're superheroes. Come on. It's for us to learn to direct our focus to God and allow him to fight the battle for us. Amen. Watch what God can do. It's way more than you can do for yourself. God says, nothing is too hard for me. Yeah. Nothing is impossible for yeah. me. Yeah. I can turn it around. Yeah. I can change lives, hallelujah. Yeah. I can change attitudes. Yeah. I can change situations. Yeah. In your battle, you are never alone. Yeah. You are never facing these battles alone. God is with us. Now, the final key to facing a battle is to go into battle with praise. We worship the Lord before the battle. We worship the Lord in the battle, and we worship the Lord after the victory. Yes. Hallelujah. The Lord still fights for us today. Yes. Deuteronomy 20 and 4, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies. Psalms 44 and 5, through you we will push down our enemies. Uh -huh. Through your name we will trample those who rise up against us. Romans 8 and 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Battles come to steal our faith. It says the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and that more abundantly. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal your glory. Stand still and watch him work. Hallelujah. Yes. That's what I see. Yes. 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 Yes.
worship him. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. I'm going to keep, keep him at the forefront. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord, we thank you for your word. Yeah. Lord, we pray that someone receives something that can help us throughout the week, Lord. Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory. Yeah. Lord, we give it all to you. Yeah. We know we've gone through this whole year, last two years, Lord, but it's all yours, Lord. We realize that we have a problem, Lord, but we're going to give a problem to you, Lord. Let you solve it, Lord. It's out of our hands. Hallelujah. It's in your hands, Heavenly Father. We'll give it to you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. And we're going to leave it at your feet in Jesus' name. You want to know the Lord? Praise His name. Yes. You want to live a life of victory? Yes. It's not always easy, but the Lord will be yes. there for you. Yes. You can just raise your hand. Yes. You don't have to come forward. Just raise your hand. Yes. And we'll pray with you. Praise God. Our eyes should be closed. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Well, Lord, we thank you for all your people. Thank you. Yes. We thank you that we're all yes. saved, Lord. Yes. Lord, we're willing to serve you, Lord. In your name, Lord. If there's anyone here today who does not have a home, yes. church home, does not have a covering, you need to be in the covering so you can learn God's word. Yes. I think we're all families today. Yes. Praise God. Thank God for you. We thank God for it. 2021, we're almost out. Yeah. You know, God has kept us this far and we yeah. want to really be grateful. Yeah. And all the lessons and messages we've heard this year was to strengthen us yeah. and to build us so we can go forward and not be discouraged and not let the devil stop us from doing what God wants you to do. Yeah. Heavenly Lord. Father, we're going to just yeah. Heavenly Father, we yeah. thank you for the service, Lord. We thank you for all that has gone forth before you, Lord. Yes. Yep. Everything decent and in order, Lord. Yes. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to serve you one more time. Yes. Lord, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory. Yes, In Jesus' name, we ask that you cover us as we go to our different homes. Yes. So wherever we're going, Lord. Yes. Lord, we give you everything that we have. In your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.